Hi, hello, my name is Sang820. I use online translation, reading aloud, virtual anchor to complete this video. I hope this form can help you better understand the video content. A long time ago, about 10 years ago, my friends and I were working on the prototype of Dragon Matrix. The original goal was to achieve the Moho model, free rotation of the head. But I quickly realized that freedom of limbs was the harder problem to solve. Free head rotation, first 160 degrees, can be simplified as a point moving on a sphere perspective change involving a point. But the free rotation of the limb, the first 180 degrees, is two points and cannot be simplified anymore. Because it involves two-point interaction perspective changes. It is very difficult to achieve automatic interaction with models and actions in the 2D field. My friend and I solved this problem after updating two versions of Dragon Matrix. A few months ago, I suddenly thought of another very simple way. Makes me think these 10 years of hard work are particularly funny. Well let me tell you all this. First, we make an arm with a simple cuff structure. The color on the inside of the cuff is at the back. The color of the hand is in the middle, and the top is the color of the outside of the sleeve. Lengthen the sleeves and choose the forearm section. The new function of MOHO 13.54 allows us to rotate and scale with the center of the selected node. Ok, let's review the traditional solution of the arm model. Create a bone layer, drag the vector layer into the bone layer. Select Node Display Mode. Create, upper arm, forearm, hand, three bones. Create the shoulder bone and make it the parent of the upper arm. Go back to the vector layer and bind the hand node to the hand bone. Tie the cuffs and wrist nodes to the forearm bones. The joints of the elbow and shoulder are tied to the upper arm bone. Go back to the bone layer. Enter the first frame, let's test the binding effect. Hmm, when the elbow is turned, wearing, appears. Can't achieve perspective action. Well, let's solve the problems one by one. You just need to select that bone, create a new action in the action panel, the name will be the same as the bone. First, we go back to the bone layer and create an action named after the forearm name, B2. I click on the bone at frame 25, creating a keyframe for the initial state, arm vertical. I turn the forearm bone to the left at frame 1 to bend the arm to the limit of what this model can bear. I turn the forearm bone to the right at frame 50 to bend the arm to the limit of what this model can handle. This allows the model to have more severe wear. Don't worry, next we go to vector layer correction. I clicked the model with the node movement tool at frame 25 to create a keyframe for the initial state, arm vertical. I am in the range of 1 frame to 50 frames, correcting the outline of the arm. Double click, main line, to return to the animation panel. Select the bone layer and test the correction effect of B2 action. Wow, the arm that exceeds the limit angle still appears, wearing. We can limit the angle of arm rotation to avoid this kind of piercing. Ok, this is probably the traditional solution of the arm model. Next, solve the problem of arm perspective. Open node display mode. Create two bones at the level of the elbow. Point to the wrist. Create a pin bone at the elbow, reassign the bone relationships. Parent child order. Hand right pointing arrow forearm right pointing arrow elbow right pointing arrow upper arm right pointing arrow shoulder. 
the parent of the bone, B5, specifying the horizontal direction of the elbow is the elbow. Specify, B5, the bone to follow the rotation of the, left forearm, bone. Specify, B6, the target bone is, hand bone. Specify the target bone of the forearm is, hand bone. We can see that both the forearm bone and the, B6 bone are pulled by the hand bone. There is a small error in binding here, the hand nodes should all be bound to the hand bones. Create, B6, the action of the bone and go to the actions panel. B6, in charge of the perspective movement of the forearm, and control its progress by, moving the bones of the hand. I click on the bone, B6, at frame 0 to create a keyframe for the arm without perspective, the longest arm. At frame 50, the rotation, B6, bone coincides with the elbow bone, creating a large perspective keyframe, the arm is the shortest state. At this point, we can only see the section of the forearm. We go to the vector layer and adjust the profile of the forearm section at frame 50. Frame 0 is the longest arm shape, so the process of arm perspective movement will occur. This, perspective process, is one way, only, telescopic, no, rotation. The target bone we just specified combines the, rotation, factor with the, scaling, factor. This is a bit abstract. I split, free rotation xyz, into two factors, rotation xy, and, telescopic z. These two factors are realized separately, and then combined together. You can achieve the effect of, free rotation, that is fake and real. It's not complicated at the software function level, it was possible many versions ago of Moho. As long as there is a, target bone. But, ideas, methods, and, software functions, are two completely different fields. Moho's software functions support a lot of, expansion and combination of ideas and methods. This is great. Of course, you need to invest a lot of time in researching software features and methods. To taste delicious animation. Okay, let's go back to the arm model and continue to refine it. We found that because the upper arm and forearm are, one piece models, they cannot block each other. So I had to modify the model to shorten the whole arm to a forearm. Take care to preserve the semicircular structure of the elbow. Enter, B6, action to correct the profile of the forearm section. Delete, B2, the keyframe inside the action. B2, was originally an action to correct the, bend of the elbow, but now it conflicts with action, B6. It seems that, bending elbow, and, arm perspective, cannot have both? We will discuss this later. We bind the node originally bound to the upper arm bone to the forearm bone. Cancel the angle limit of the forearm bone. Copy and paste the nodes of the forearm to the new vector layer, upper arm. Flip the node upside down to combine the two half circles into a complete circular structure. We need the nodes of the upper arm joint to fit the nodes of the forearm joint as closely as possible. So copying and pasting nodes is a good choice. Bind the new upper arm layer to the upper arm bone. Pay attention to the redundant action of deleting the newly created layer. Now the forearm can use the target bone to achieve the free rotation effect. But the upper arm can only be rotated by rotating the bones, which is somewhat regrettable. Next, we follow this idea, optimization scheme, and apply it to the entire arm. Create a cute pink arm on the vector layer and drag it into the bone layer.
create bones and name them a left shoulder b left elbow c left wrist d left upper arm scaling e left forearm scaling reassign bone parent child relationships c left wrist right pointing arrow b left elbow right pointing arrow a left shoulder left forearm right pointing arrow left elbow left upper arm right pointing arrow a left shoulder d left upper arm scaling right pointing arrow b6 right pointing arrow a left shoulder e scaling left forearm right pointing arrow b8 right pointing arrow b left elbow bind the hand node to the c left wrist bone bind the forearm node to the left forearm bone bind the upper arm node to the left upper arm bone create the e left forearm zoom action click on the bone at frame 1 and record the initial state keyframe rotate the e left forearm scaling bone at frame 50 coincide with the b left elbow bone and create a key frame enter the vector layer adjust the outline of the forearm section at frame 50 and create key frames if the upper arm figure prevents us from observing the outline of the forearm we can temporarily move the upper arm graphics to the side area after the outline of the forearm section is completed we select the nodes of the upper arm graph and delete the red keyframe at the current position in the track, the upper arm graphics reset. Select the D upper left arm scale, bone and create an action. Click on the bone at frame 1 and record the initial state keyframe. Rotate the D left upper arm scaling, bone at frame 50, coincide with the a left shoulder, bone, and create a keyframe. Go to the vector layer, adjust the outline of the upper arm section at frame 50, and create keyframes. OK, the arm movement is almost done. Don't forget to specify, target bone, and, follow rotation angle. Select the, left forearm, E left forearm scaling, bones. Specify their target bone as, C left wrist. Select the, left upper arm. D left upper arm scaling, bones. Specify their target bone as, left elbow. Select the, B6, bone and specify the rotation angle that it follows the, upper left arm. Select the, B8, bone and specify the rotation angle that it follows the, left forearm. Hide the lines of the semicircle structure of the forearm and adjust the color level of the upper arm to the lowest level. OK, the whole, free rotation, arm is completed. Since I didn't align the semicircle structure of the upper arm and forearm, they turned a little, wearing. Oh, don't be as sloppy as me emmmmmm. We hide the redundant bones, and three pin bones can control the entire arm, free rotation. Of course, we can add more details to enhance the three-dimensional of the arm. This method also applies to grid plus picture. Suitable for making legs, torso, or other strip-shaped objects. If you are interested, you can try it. But you need to pay attention. Try to stretch the length of the action, 100 to 300 frames. Otherwise, the mainline action may be stuck. The above is my free rotation idea. I hope it can inspire you. I'm saying 820. Have a nice day.